Okay, welcome to the ninth common session of Synoikesis Digital Classics, uh, summer semester 2018. Today, our, we changed language <laughs> because uh, in the last two weeks we had Latin. Today, we have a session about Open Persian, a project that we have here at the University of Leipzig. And uh, the, the title of the session is Teaching Greek to Persian Speakers with Tree Banking and Alignment. And uh, we have uh, three guests today. Um, from Iran, so Arash Keramati from the University of Tehran, Farnoush Shamsian, and I apologize for my pronunciation as usual, and Mariam Horadi from the University of Leipzig. Uh, our uh, three guests were with us already last year. In the past, they have been contributing a lot to Sunoikis' digital classic, so I thank them because really they have been giving a great contribution for uh, uh, Persian and Greek. And today, so we have a very interesting uh, session with uh, different topics. Uh, you have the class outline on GitHub. Uh, and as you can see, so there are different topics concerning translations from ancient Greek to Persian. Then there is uh, introducing Persis, an online ancient Greek course for Persian speakers. Then uh, um, our guests will discuss uh, complications uh, concerning teaching and learning ancient Greek in Persian. Then we will see how we can use alignment for teaching ancient Greek to Persian speakers. And uh, we will also see experiments with the direct translation of Herodotus uh, into uh, New Persian. And uh, I think we can start with uh, uh, Mariam. Uh, for Adi from the University of Leipzig. So, Mariam, uh, welcome back to Synoikis. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, so um, I start with um, my very own topic, you know, because uh, so in all sessions of uh, Sunoikisis, I have talked about translation alignment and the experiment that I had. Um, of course, it was not with ancient Greek, it was with uh, German and Persian. But uh, the reason that I start with this at first, because I want to show the results of my um, research, which is about working with languages without having the knowledge of that language. And this gives me uh, like an, so it's, it's like an introduction to the to the topic teaching ancient Greek to Persian speakers if they don't have any background in ancient Greek. The, th the thing is that I we speak about working with translation alignments and tree banking for teaching purposes, but I have realized in, in some speeches that my audience don't really believe me, you know, because I talk about I talk about how it is possible to learn and do as, and translate without having their knowledge, and and the users, uh, the the audience seems to hear me and they, so they agree with me. But somehow, so I had a very honest audience uh, a few weeks weeks ago, and I've asked them if they believe it is possible, and they were honest to say no, they don't believe. But the results here show that it is possible. Just uh, to give a background about what I have done. I am, so these are the, the, uh, the slides that we have used uh, for the last, uh, last Sunoikisi session. If you want, you can go to the GitHub page and look at them uh, about the word alignment, how what it is, what we have done, and also the YouGarit uh, platform. I'm sure that you all know about that. Um, just to give a very, uh, brief introduction about the experiment. Um, and I'm sure you know you already know about that. So the experiment is a citizen science project and it was about to see if we can have users with no knowledge of the source of the classical language produce alignment data, the translation alignment data. So the reason was that for some languages, like in, in this case for Persian and German, we don't have enough speakers mm -hmm. Uh, who know German and Persian in the in the fluent level, so that they can produce a tra uh, accurate translation alignment data. What we have done was that that we have provided a kind of scaffolding, a support aid with the English and 
and Persian alignment so that the users with no background in Persian can use this scaffolding and align German and Persian data. So what we wanted to what, what we wanted to analyze was that if this produced data would be accurate enough and if uh, the users are engaged, so if they are motivated in producing data, and if they learn something out of that. And so here it is how it works. As you see here, we have the phrase or the sentence in classical uh, Persian. And we have the same phrase uh, in, I use the pointer so you can see that, uh, the same phrase with the German translation here. The process was that, so here you see that it is aligned. So this word is aligned with this word in, in English. Although you don't know or the users don't know anything about Persian and this, see this word as just a visual object, they can realize, okay, this word means rose in English, so this word, which is the same word, means Rosen in German. That's how it works, uh, so the, the general process is. So we were aware that this process is not easy because we are working with the authentic texts, we are working with the authentic translations, which means that, so the translation strategies are different. The English translation that we have is for, um, 1892 and the German translation is for 1812 and the scope of the translation is also different. The English translation has been produced for for learners, for the ones who want to learn Persian with the translation in Germ into English and this translation is very close to the source text but the German translation is for for German audience. So the audience is not supposed to read Persian text, but they are supposed to read the, the content. So it's, a, it's more about conveying the message. And because of that, it's different. It makes it difficult to compare the, the texts. For example, in this particular uh, example, is that this word in Persian means medicine. And in, in English translation, it's remedy, which means kind of medicine, it could be like seen as medicine, but the German translation has been translated to a doc doctor, to, to physician. And, and the question here is that if the user aligned this word, does it mean that they understood the meaning or it's just a mistake? And if they al don't align it, does it mean that they have realized that, that this word isn't the proper translation for this word or not? So these are the difficulties and these were the, the problems that I, I needed to consider uh, for the analysis of the, of the results. So here is the structure uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the first part in which I have uh, measure the accuracy of the data by the German speakers. As you see here, so I had 20 German students without any knowledge in Persian, and I had 20 Iranian master students in German, in German translation, which means that they had Persian as their native language, and they had German in the master level. So they, um, the students, the master students in Iran, they have an entrance exam, so uh, for, for German language which means that if they pass this exam and they start with the master, uh, with, the, with their master, it means that they have a certain level of German. They had 10 poems, about uh, 1,000 uh, words, and the scaffolding, as I've mentioned, was the English translation. So they could see which word means what in, um, in English. And the task for the both, for both groups was that they align the German translation with the Persian text. And and also, uh, what I ha what was important for me was that to compare the output of the human alignment, the manual alignment, with the aut automatic alignment, because it was important to see how it differs uh, the you know the 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 output of the of the 
uh, German students how it differs from the automatic alignment because in the end it is it is interesting to see if we can use this data set as a training set for for uh, automatic aligners and here is the evaluation here you can see so I say that so the scores start from zero to 100 the blue line shows the performance of the of the German speakers here I have recall, precision, F-score, and the alignment error rate, which are the measures that are used for uh, for the evaluation of the accuracy of the machine alignment, but it also could be used for, uh, for the human alignments because in the end, the data structure is the same. Uh, so the, and for all of these, uh, scores here it is important to, uh, so the, the better the score the higher the score means that the better is the performance just for the alignment error rate and you can see from the from the name itself it it refers to the mistakes so the less the score means that the less the stay uh, the mistakes and the errors are so the better the performance and here we see the blue line refers um, to German speakers with no knowledge of the Persian. The orange line uh, shows the performance of the Iranian speakers, native speakers with master level of German. And the gray line uh, shows the output of Berkeley aligner, the yellow line, the Giza++ plus plus aligner. And here you see, first, we have the correlation in the human output, so the Germans and the Iranians they have both better scores in LICAR, uh, recall and uh, less sco um, so less better score in, in precision and and you see that so it changes in the same way but the important thing is that the the line here the german for the german speakers is above the the orange one which means that the German speakers had slightly, they were slightly more accurate that, than Persian speakers. So the, my first assumption was that if they are, if they could somehow be between the performance of Iranians and machine aligners, it would be good to use, uh, to use their, their output as their, as their test, as a, as, as a training set. But here we see that it is, they are even better than the native than native speakers, and I think that the reason for that is that they have they have this scaffolding, this support aid, which gives them hint about what they should do, and and there is no way that they can misunderstand the meaning of the word, as if in for Persian speakers it could be that they have different ideas about about. Uh, compound verbs, for example, in, in a very specific case, I can talk about a compound, a kind of compound verb which is not not used anymore in the in the new Persian. Uh, so, I mean, in the per new Persian is is very tricky because the new Persian is the language of of uh, almost one hundred for uh, one thousand four hundred years ago. But in the in the modern Persian that that is spoken right now. This compound ver verb doesn't exist anymore. And the Germans, they have seen the English translation aligned with the text, so they knew that this compound, these two tokens are be so belong together as a compound verb, but for the Iranians, it was not the case. Um, here, I have talked about precision and recall so here we can see what it means so here we have the set of the gold standard and here we have the set of the annotation and here so in this area we have the overlap of the gold standard and the annotation of the users so and here I can you, you can see that the the closer so the less answers the annotators have outside the data set, we have a better precision. 
And the more answers from the gold standard, the annotation annotators have taken, we have a better recall. And that was the reason that we have, we had alignment error rate because alignment error rate is the combination of precision and recall so that, so that we can make sure that we have, that we cover all aspects of, of uh, this score. And, and we, you know, there are, there are discussions about the, how, how really I will, um, the alignment error rate and this this method of the of the calculation is, but I don't want to go into into the details. I have chosen um, this um, this kind of calculation because I think that it works here, and uh, so the alignment error rate error, error rate, as I told, uh, covers precision and recall both. Um, and here also I have compared the results. In, term of, in terms of part of speech. I wanted to see for which part of speech the users had uh, less, er less errors. And here again, you see here is the, here is the performance of the, the blue line is the performance of Germans, which shows that uh, they had less errors also in part of speeches. In some part of speeches, they had slightly more errors as for determiners, I, and it is so, you know the determiners are not are not very clear in in the in the uh, languages, so it's not a, an easy part of the speech. Also, I, I think that also for learning, it's not easy to to deal with determiners. Um, but nouns were covered pretty good here. You we see, and also we see here that for the automatic aligners, so the less errors we had were. Uh, in nouns, so the automatic al aligners do a pretty good job when they um, align the nouns, which which also I think which makes sense. Um, well, as I have mentioned, I so the experiment had two parts. The first part was for um, analyzing the accuracy. So the question was if the users with no knowledge of Persian they can produce data as accurate as the native speakers. And the second part was about answering the question, okay, if they do, and they do, they are accurate, so the data is accurate, but but do they learn something if it, these activities has something for them? So for this uh, purpose, the, um, the Data, uh, the uh, um, research structure that I had was that they, uh, they, 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 this, um, there was two group of two groups of the users, and user users in group A they have started with the alignment, and users in group B they have learned uh, the words of the of this poem with the flashcards, and then they have they have switched their um, task, the users with the alignment continued learning with flashcards and the ones the users group B who have uh, learned with the flashcards now had to work with the other poem with the alignment and on the second day they have just switched they have started with the with the opposite task because I wanted to make sure that the difference in the in their output and in their learning uh, performance doesn't come because they were tired uh, because it's it's pretty hard to work like three, four hours in a day. So it could it could lead to, to the drop of concentration and a drop of learning. Uh, so the day two was for to making sure that it doesn't come from, from lack of concentration. Um, about the engagement, the answer, I think it's very clear. So the users worked with the alignment, they have worked in average 58 minutes out of 60 minutes that they had. But for the flashcards, the users just spent 42 minutes of 60 minutes. So they were allowed to stop learning if they uh, didn't want it, want to learn anymore. And we see that the user users stay engaged for the whole time of the 60 minutes. But for the flashcards, they, they they don't want to learn anymore after 42 minutes. 
Um, here I have the the first results of the perf of the learning performance. Here in each, you know, each each um, group of lines refer to one user, and they, it starts with the immediate test. So as they have learned, they had immediately a test, and then after two weeks, they had another test that we can check how, how many words they remember. And after two months, there was another test to check if they remember any word after two months. And here we see, so here it starts with the, with the immediate test. It goes to delayed test after two weeks and then delayed test after two months. And as we see here, the users are very different. Oh, uh, another, uh, Another point that I should mention is that the blue lines here refer to the flashcards and the red lines refer to alignment. And here we see that it is really different. We can see the individual differences here very clearly so that, so that it doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, if I want to categorize these, uh, these um, charts in these diagrams, it would be very difficult because it's it's very the, every user is different, but if we do average scores, if we look at the average scores, we have I think we have pretty clear data. So here we have stem and leaf uh, diagram. Uh, so the 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 y axis refers to the points from zero to one hundred to the percent. So it's the score based on one to hundred percent, and the x axis shows the uh, the performance of the students on alignment and on flashcards. So the left side is always alignment, the right side is always flashcards. Um, this beige color that we see here uh, shows the most frequent score that students had doing the alignment. And here it shows the most frequent scores that students had uh, learning with flashcards. And the lines here, it shows kind of the less frequent scores that the students had. And the ones here, like we have one here, we have two here, one here, these are the outliers. So they don't, they are not in the range of the obtained scores so that for the further, further um, analyzers they could be excluded. Okay, what we have here, it's for the first poem that they have worked on immediate test. And we see that the performance of the students immediately after learning so was very different. They had, so their scores differ in a range of about 70% to 50% in alignment, but it uh, it uh, covers 62% up to almost 100% with flashcards. So students with flashcards, they did a very great job. It means that if you have a quiz tomorrow, just learn with flashcards, don't learn with alignments. But here we, we see after two weeks, alignment slightly goes up and flashcards, it comes down. So it drops. What you have learned here, you forget it after two weeks. And here we see that the alignment stay, stays in the same range, but flashcards still drops. Another poem, we see the same pattern. So flashcards is much better than alignment in the immediate test, but then after two weeks, alignment slightly goes up Flashcards come, flash come down, and after two months, they are almost in the same range. Alignment is steady. Alignment stays where it was. Same pattern for the third poem, and also same pattern for the fourth poem. So it repeats over and over again. For all poems that the students have worked on, we see the same pattern. Um, well, what we have done was that um, was that we have just worked with the alignment. I believe that if we add tree banking, 
then we we will have more accurate data because uh, and and also more accurate uh, I'm sorry uh, more deep learning because here everything that they have learned was based on their their own observations in some cases I had I had one word in particular that um, a students learned a, a word wrongly and I have seen that they have they have repeated the wrong answer over and over again and I checked why it why this it happens and I have seen that in the first day that they have learned with alignment they have aligned this word wrong and so it is something that they have actually learned but because they didn't have any feedback they had they learned it they learned the incorrect meaning so I think that it is something that needs to be improved so that the learners have feedback um, for their for for what they do and for what they learn um, here I want just to go uh, to and uh, to ancient Greek and Persian part um, and I think that Farnoosh can can um, evaluate my translation better than me because I don't really know Greek but um, but I have tried to translate Herodotus into Persian so the process that I had was that I had dynamic lexicon in Ugarit I had scape viewer and I had also tree ranking which means that for every word here I could see the morphological um, information of that specific word and I could see the dependency I could see so if it is the genitive which word is the head of so I I saw okay genitive it should have a head which word is the head of this and I have looked for that I have found that and based on that I gathered the information that I needed for producing the translation and so another thing that I need to emphasize in my talks is that I didn't translate from English I had the English translation I had several translations because you know I, I believe that as far as you work with a translation you just work with one translation with one interpretation of one text and it doesn't necessarily means that it this interpretation is correct but if you have several translations you can see the meaning of the words in the context this is something that also Ugarit the dynamic lexicon of Ugarit gives us that you see the meaning of the word in the context and and it helps you to somehow understand the real it's not like a dictionary that you just just check and find a word but it gives you a, a, an option to understand the words and because of this I say that this translation is not the translation of the English text and you see here we have we have uh, red parts which means that it's they are not translated and also if someone reads Persian and English they can confirm that it's not it's not exactly the translation uh, of the English text um, so and I believe that this, that's, that this activity helps us to create new translations directly from ancient Greek because we we rarely have direct translations from ancient Greek into Persian it gives us gives us the opportunity to directly translate from ancient Greek into Persian and also it gives us also the opportunity to learn in the meanwhile as we are producing new translations and also it gives it helps us to have access to read the sources you know so the Persian history uh, Farnish please correct me if I'm wrong but I think that the mostly the Persian history is uh, the history of Persian Empire has been written based on Herodotus and I think that we should at least provide the this opportunity that the reader the, the 
Persian speakers, they can at least read what has been originally written about, about their history. Uh, so that was my part. Um, I think I can give the floor to Farnoosh. Farnoosh, if you want to uh, continue, and also I'm very happy if I can hear about your judgment about my, my uh, <laughs> translation. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Of course, uh, I will talk about uh, your translation when I'm uh, actually talking about participles and about what you said about uh, Herodotus. Uh, I guess Herodotus uh, and other uh, Greek sources are the main uh, sources we have for uh, the history of Iran. Um, and uh, some inscriptions, especially uh, Behistun inscription. <clears throat> um, uh, in this part of the session, uh, I'm going to first talk about uh, available direct translations from Greek to Persian. And uh, then we will proceed to uh, Greek learning methods and materials for Persian speakers. Um, I begin with intro introducing the translated works that are actually available uh, currently in Persian. Uh, just to give you a better understanding of the situation of classical studies in Iran. <clears throat> uh, as you probably know, in general, uh, relations between the Persians and Greek uh, were quite complicated. Uh, for example, we have a Persian wars uh, starting around uh, 500 BC or uh, invasion of uh, Persian Empire by Alexander the Great. Uh, of course, during these wars, uh, Persians probably got acquainted with Greek culture. And later, uh, Parthians were also fascinated by, by Greek tragedies. But still, there is no record of translation from any Greek text to Persian uh, before Sasanian Empire. Uh, last year in Synaxis, I talked about trilingual inscription of Shapur, the second king of Sasanian Empire uh, in Kabezartusht. Uh, <clears throat> this is actually Kabezartusht. Uh, the inscription has a Greek version. Uh, the trilingual uh, inscription is in Greek, Middle Persian, and Parthian. Uh, but the Greek version uh, is probably trans a translation from Middle Persian or a Parthian version to Greek and not from Greek to Persian. Uh, but it is still, uh, it is worth mentioning because uh, of its historical importance. Uh, on the other hand, many sources report that some Greek texts have been translated to Middle Persian in Sasanian era. Uh, but none of them are available currently. Uh, for instance, we know Paul the Persian translated some of the Aristotle's writings at, uh, <clears throat> but, uh, at Sasanian era, uh, but again, we are not sure if he translated uh, them to Middle Persian or Syriac. Spanish, may I interrupt you? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, do you, are, you, are you sharing your slides with us? I don't see your slides. Uh, no, no, I, I'm not uh, should. Oh, I, sorry, I, okay. I, I forgot to share. Thank you uh, for telling me. But uh, the, okay, I, I didn't show anything important. It, it, this was just this picture of Kabe uh, Zartosht. <laughs> and this is the uh, Greek text. Uh, on the wall of Kabe Zartosh, uh, but thank you for mentioning it. <laughs> um, okay, um, this is the Greek version. Uh, and uh, many sources, I, I, as I was saying, uh, report that uh, some, uh, uh, especially Aristotle's books, have been translated in Sasan era, but uh, we do, they're not available now. Uh, for instance, uh, Paul the Persian translated uh, Aristotle's writing, uh, <clears throat> but uh, they're not uh, now available. Um, so uh, the only available translations are from Middle Persian to uh, Greek. Uh, and in recent years, uh, some of Greek writings, uh, again, mostly uh, from Aristotle, have been translated to Persian. Uh, and 
keep in mind that indirect translations, uh, usually from English or French, are quite common. In fact, uh, famous Greek works usually have multiple translations in Persian. <clears throat> Uh, there have been some translations directly from Greek in the past 10 years, but the main works belong to three translators, Mir Shamseddin Adib Sultani, Sharafeddin Khorasani, and Suhail Afnan. Uh, this is the cover of the Suhail Afnan's book. Uh, this is the translation of the Poetics of Aristotle, it has been translated in, in 1948. Uh, he also uh, published a lexicon of philosophical terms, uh, especially Greek terms, in Persian and Arabic. Um, Sharfuddin Khorasani has uh, two major books. Uh, this one is uh, Metaphysics, again Aristotle. Uh, it was published in 1987. And uh, he has another book concerning pre-Socratic philosophy, uh, which contains uh, direct translations of a selection of related fragments. Uh, this one was published in 1971. <clears throat> and Adib Sultani translated um, Aristotle's organ uh, around 20 years ago. Uh, and to my acknowledgement, uh, other than these translations, there hasn't been any major work in this field. Uh, as you see, direct translations to Persian are quite limited, and there is also no textbook for learning Greek in Persian, uh, except for one. Uh, Janet Blake and Iman Shafi Beg. Uh, published a translation of uh, three English textbooks in one volume. Uh, they translated uh, Wilding's Greek for Beginners, a, a poem of Greek grammar uh, by Abbots and Mansfield, and a part of uh, Loshnik Introduction to Ancient Greek. This is the cover of Janet Blake and Iman Shafi Beg's book. Um, but since these uh, three books that have been translated are actually written for English speakers, the translation of exercises is not uh, quite helpful, and overall it just uh, seems too complicated uh, for self-study, and sometimes it could be misleading even as a for source for teaching. Uh, considering the current situation of uh, classical studies in Iran, uh, a self-study source uh, would be of great help. Uh, although uh, there are few lecturers and instructors in this field, uh, it's not easy to find a course and almost impossible if you don't live in Tehran. Uh, and if, in, if you find an enrolling uh, course, uh, you probably won't be able to continue your studies uh, in an intermediate or advanced level. And with all this in mind, uh, my colleagues and I decided to prepare a free online Greek course, uh, which is called Persis. Uh, in this way, uh, learning materials will be available to any Persian speaker who has access to internet. I tried to make this course as simple as possible. Uh, every lesson contains some comparisons between Greek and Persian. Uh, and at the end of every lesson, uh, learners might, uh, might, uh, must take a test. Um, <clears throat> here uh, is the front page of Persis. <clears throat> uh, the website is all in Persian, uh, and uh, also the Accents in Greek will be taught a bit later, just to give the learners some time to first learn the alphabet, probably. <clears throat> uh, this is lesson one to five, and let's we talk about lesson five. Lesson five is uh, about uh, uh, actually genitive, dative, and vocative case. Uh, the concept, not the declensions, actually. Uh, before lesson five, they have already learned about nominative and accusative in lesson four, and uh, about numbers and genders uh, in lesson three. Uh, 
And as you see, the learning process is uh, quite a slow. Uh, lesson one is uh, the alphabet, lesson two is uh, the present uh, indicative active verb. <clears throat> uh, most of the exercises of the, actually, I don't show the lessons because they're all in Persian and uh, <clears throat> I don't think uh, they will be useful for uh, this uh, lecture. Um, uh, this is a, a sample of an exercise which uh, students have to give a translation uh, of uh, this sentence. And uh, this one, uh, they have to guess the meaning of this word. Uh, <clears throat> uh, actually, we use uh, these kind of questions, uh, actually ask, uh, ask the uh, students to uh, and guess the answer, uh, because these types of questions usually contain some key points uh, of the next lesson and help us uh, evaluate the context, uh, the contents, excuse me. Uh, and they have to take the test, uh, otherwise uh, they cannot go to the next lesson. Uh, in addition uh, to uh, providing uh, learning materials, Persis would also be helpful for developing a textbook especially designed for Persian speakers. Uh, exercises are the key to this matter uh, because analyzing the test results would uh, determine the quality of uh, the exercises and the lesson itself. Uh, for example, if a high percentage of learners are not able to answer a specific question, we reevaluate the question and, uh, of course, the related part of the lesson uh, to find out what have caused uh, their confusion. The main challenges in teaching ancient Greek grammar are the concepts and forms that don't have an equivalent in Persian and we have to face them uh, even at the very beginning of these lessons. And uh, to make these difficulties uh, easier for the learners, the lessons usually contain uh, some comparisons between Greek and Persian. For instance, uh, declension of uh, <clears throat> uh, words, actually the, excuse me, nouns does not uh, exist in modern Persian. Uh, but uh, there is a post position, ra, that marks the subject of a sentence, and it can be used uh, to, for teaching uh, accusative. Also, we have, although we have to be uh, cautious to uh, prevent any misunderstanding for further lessons. Other confusing concepts would be middle voice, deponent verbs, optative mood, or even participles. Uh, and of course, as, uh, teaching some of these subjects in other languages are uh, challenging as well. But since we are relying only on some self-study, we have to be as clear as possible. Um, in addition uh, to uh, the a thorough and detailed explanation and uh, explicit exercises, uh, we are planning to use alignments uh, to gradually prepare the learners to face the original text. Uh, and it could also make the course more interesting. I have used alignments in classrooms, most recently in Alame Tabataba University. And in, it seems to make the session much more interesting uh, for the students. <clears throat> and we used uh, one of the Sasanian inscriptions. Uh, uh, and uh, the original plan was to explain genitive case in context. And uh, it came as a surprise to me that the students not only understood the subject, they also become much more uh, enthusiastic uh, about learning Greek. Uh, I think in more advanced levels, uh, alignments uh, could be useful as well, because by aligning direct translations from Greek to Persian, learners uh, would learn a much more, uh, get a much more uh, clear idea of the syntax. Uh, they can reach a better understanding of the aligned text itself, and uh, even evaluate the translation to, actually not properly, but to some extent. Overall, uh, encountering original texts in early stages 
uh, even though learners are not able to understand most of the words, uh, seems to have a remarkable impact uh, on their motivation. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's uh, take a look at some translation alignments. Uh, I have used three sentences from Sharfeddin Khorasani here uh, to see how he translated the uh, participles. So participles, uh, um, Participle of some verbs are not commonly used in Persian. So in many cases, the translators have to find an alternative uh, for them. <clears throat> uh, in this uh, fragment of Heraclitus, uh, Shafuddin Khorasani has uh, translated uh, the participle uh, as a, a verb uh, and uh, he used uh, as a relative clause, actually. Uh, you see, here, ke in Persian uh, is the relative pronoun, and it, it doesn't have an equivalent in uh, original Greek fragment. <clears throat> uh, here, another fragment of uh, Heraclitus. Uh, uh, it has been translated, the participles have been uh, translated uh, one as a relative, again, uh, a participle in Persian. Uh, here we have and uh, another one has been translated as a verb. So uh, to be clear, uh, we have two present indicative active verbs in this sentence, uh, in the Persian translation. Uh, again, another fragment of Heraclitus. Uh, uh, all the Heraclitus fragments are translated by Sharfit in Khorasani. Here, uh, one of them is a participle. One of the participles is a participle again in Persian, but uh, another one has been translated to a noun with a preposition. And uh, again, let's take a look at the. Uh, alignment of uh, Ms. Foradi. Uh, this text uh, uh, has been translated to Persian without, uh, actually she already explained it, uh, without uh, any knowledge of Greek. And uh, two participles here have been translated uh, as participles in Persian. Uh, here we have Zadeh and uh, we have uh, a bit later and um, overall the uh, translation seems accurate to me uh, except uh, for uh, one extra here we have va we have one extra coordinating conjunction uh, uh, that I wish it wasn't there and some inaccuracies in the last sentence from digar onche bo es jang bo digar on shoot uh, so, uh, one other thing about the methods we will use in Persis, other than aligning uh, intermediate and advanced uh, students, will have to translate parts of an original text uh, using Persos. And uh, we are planning to add another re a reading uh, course. Uh, so, uh, the reading course will inc include an original text and, more importantly, some references to the grammar course for further reading. Uh, by adding a reading course, learners will be able to choose how they want to start. Uh, they can start with reading course or first learn the, about the grammar. Uh, but I would recommend they start with grammar and then join the reading course after they have learned just the basics. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, I guess uh, I will be answering them later. Um, so Arash uh, has written to me that uh, do you some uh, connection issues, he's not able to join, uh, oh. but he has prepared the text of, of what he wanted to present and I will upload it upload it in the uh, in the Sunokis um, github page uh, so sorry about that uh, so if if we have questions uh, Fanush and I can answer those questions. Uh, 
So how many students do you have, Banoush? Uh, currently, I'm not uh, cheating, uh, excuse me, I'm not teaching, uh, but uh, I guess uh, when we start process, uh, uh, it's, there would be uh, uh, actually a good amount of uh, number of students. Uh, because uh, it's quite rare uh, to find a Greek course in Iran. Uh, so, and uh, an online course uh, would be quite helpful uh, since many of uh, individuals who want to learn Greek don't live in Tehran. And uh, the, to my acknowledgement, there hasn't been a course in ancient Greek in any other cities in Iran. Uh, at least in the last 20 years. Uh, so uh, it would be much more accessible and I'm guessing uh, at least 200 uh, should attend because overall I have, uh, and uh, me and Mr. Kramati um, together, uh, I guess we had more than uh, 300 students overall. So uh, in different uh, actually excuse me in different semesters I mean <clears throat> so a question is uh, that I was talking to Miriam about I, do, does any is there any consciousness in Iran of the fact that, that Xenophon wrote an idealizing biography of the education of Cyrus the Great the Cyropidae I pasted the Wikipedia entry in for that. Uh, and, uh, yes, uh, yes, I guess, uh, uh, and uh, many of these books, uh, many of uh, Greek uh, historical works have been translated to uh, Persian, actually, uh, that's why uh, we had such a great number of students uh, in Tehran. Uh, and I, I had the students who uh, actually inquired uh, quite frequently about uh, the intermediate level, uh, the advanced level, but uh, it's it's difficult to, to uh, actually hold help hold, holding these courses in universities is uh, difficult. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, uh, Anis, you asked me the uh, question here. So, uh, the German students, they were, uh, they were uh, graduate students and they had, um, they also had translation studies the same as the, as the um, uh, students in Iran. So, they were uh, students of translation studies, most of them English translation studies, English and German, they had as their, their working languages. Um, and about the clustering, um, I haven't. I, I, I didn't do that to to uh, find the common factors for um, for the for the individual differences. You, I, I guess you mean. Um, I, I think that I could, I could do that. Yeah, I will. I will try it. Well, what else can we do to help? So, sorry, Greg, I didn't... Uh... So I think the, the question is, what else we can do to be helpful to people in Iran who um, have to learn Greek? I mean, I think that if we, if we have, if we provide more access, you know, because as I have learned from Farnoosh, uh, people know um, uh, Perseus in Iran. But if they... So if we have more, you know, if we can show them what they can use with Perseus. I mean, just just the ones know about Perseus who are already learning Greek. But if we have access to to more audience and, and show them what we can do if we don't know Greek, I mean, I mean, this could help that we have that 
uh, people are more motivated. I th you know, because in my opinion, it is like this, that people think it is something not accessible. It is something for, for the ones who are just, just uh, working with classical languages and that's it. But if we can give, show them that it is possible, I think we will have more audience. And I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that people are interested in, in dealing with the, with the Greek te text, especially, as I said, because our knowledge about our, our past is based on Greek texts. Oh, I see that, Ms., uh, that uh, Mr. Karamati is, is here. Uh, do you hear us, uh, Mr. Karamati? Uh, yes. Uh, hello. Hi. Yeah. Okay. So great. Uh, uh, do you want Do you want to go with your part? I think that we are running. Uh, Monica, do we have time for that, or it's too late? No. 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 We have time. Absolutely. We still have uh, more. Uh, we still have about twenty minutes. Oh, great. Okay. So, so, Mr. Karamati, if you want to go uh, uh, through your talk. Uh, yes, uh, uh, for the program, uh, uh, there was a three session workshop October uh, uh, to, um, 2000 in Tehran. In the workshop, uh, some students, some beginners of classical Greek uh, were participated. Uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, I had to explain two, uh, uh, one designed by Jiang and uh, the other designed by uh, um, Beraya. Uh, I didn't manage to work uh, Jiang's three banks, and then uh, we have a session to compare Jiang, Jiang's three with Beraya's three banks. Uh, now, uh, this is um, my report, and uh, I read it. Uh, main questions are the workshop. The main question which directed the sessions of the workshop was as follows. Was information provided by the three banks enough for the beginners to reach an acceptable translation of a sample text? There was a paragraph of Plato Symposium as a sample with two, three banks showing relations in the text. First session. There was a pretest at the first session before introducing the three bank designed by Gian. In the pretest, the beginning about the part of the world in the sample text for, uh, for a scores her or his ability to compose sentences which she or he knew with certainty the meaning of five scores she or he knew only by conjecture three scores the words she or he had seen but now forgot their meanings two scores and the words she or he did not know uh, one score were assessed or marked then the first uh, three banks designed by Jiang was introduced generally. And the roles of the words and their syntactical relations were explained based on the tree bank and without any reference to uh, their meanings in New Persian. At the second stage, the dance composed by the main verb of the text was selected for translations. Uh, here the verb is the main verb of the text and also it's selected by Jung as predicate from root. Based on the results of the pretest, four students of five did not know the verb, and one student had seen it, but now for its meaning. The pretest terms 
are as the following. Uh, excuse me, uh, can you uh, see it or not? Uh, sure, I can, I can, yeah, sure, I can share the slides, just, uh, Monica, I think that if... Uh, uh, Is this for Adi? Yes, yes, I, I just shared the slides right now. Um, I can't see the slides. Uh, no, I go to the, to the GitHub page because I have it there, but if you just uh, yeah. can change my... Um, uh, 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 thank you. On the uh, I... Uh, I can. Mariam, I see. Uh, I don't see your your screen. No, I see. Uh, wait, I, I I'm just uh, yes. going for the. Take your time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I um, Okay, uh, do you see the slides now? No. Are you sharing the screen? I am... Um, wait, I try again. Yes. No? Uh, yes, yes, it works. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Karamati, do you want to continue? Uh, excuse me. Uh, there was a... Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, this is it. And uh, I can... Then... Uh, The results on a slide. Um, this one? Then I continue. The triggering of the sentence having been explained by the teacher of workshop, the student students compile translation in new Persian based on the meanings of the words in English. Um. No, uh, no, uh, former, former, please. Okay, uh, teachers that dig into a sentence, I and as version of the this is acceptable. Sure. Uh, I think we have problems with the audio. Maybe he can. This version verse one. Uh, please go. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, Yeah, we have problem. Maybe yes, and maybe he can try to switch off the video because the camera sometimes. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Karamati, can you switch off your video? Your uh, the camera, so. Yes, I can read the translation. A student one. He will perceive or see. a wonderful essentially fair he will perceive more wonderful wonderful thing 
the natural beauty. I think we lost. Yeah, I also. Wonderful thing, the beauty. Composed the was simple. Basic comparison. Benjamin P. with Night of One. Yeah, also. Uh, Can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Karmati, I think that we, uh, I think that your connection is very poor. So I'm not sure if we can continue. Uh, um, Monica, we can yeah. upload the report in GitHub Wiki. What do you think? Y yes, of course. So maybe um, he can try to record this part, and then we can upload it in GitHub. Of course, this happens. So this is I not can, the first time. the video. Sorry. It, it, uh, I uh, I turned uh, the video off. Um, but I mean, uh, I mean we can we can try with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, may I continue or not? Now it sounds much better. Yes. Uh, then I continue. Uh, yes. Well, okay. Yes. Yeah. Third session. At the third session, the students were asked to compare two different tree banks, one designed by June and the other designed by Brian. of the following sentence in order that the teacher might find out whether they consider the information provided sufficient for translation. Proton men ai on kai ute gignomenon, ute apolumenon, ute auxanomenon, ute fithinon. The previous results can you see uh, on the slides? And then the first three banks designed by Jiang, the students aided by the teacher managed to arrive at similar, though not exactly the same translations in new Persian, which were acceptable. These, Persians, these Persian translations were similar to the following English phrases. A student one, at first, always it is. Neither becomes, nor perishes, perishes neither grows, nor decay. A student to always being. Uh, like a philosophical uh, term, uh, a student to uh, had translated the phrase. Neither becomes nor perishes and neither grows nor decays. A student three, a student three uh, regarded men as negative. Always the first non-being neither becomes a reality nor expands, neither perishes nor decays. A student for being always is being is a, a philosophical term. Neither it becomes nor it perishes, neither it grows nor it decays. A student five, at first, everlasting being or eternal being, men, a student five uh, could not reach a, any acceptable uh, translation for men and uh, uh, wrote men with a question mark. And neither changes nor uh, perishes, neither grows, neither increases nor decays. The second three banks by Brian was, however, assessed as puzzling by the students compared to the first one. And it seemed that the second three banks could not help the students to, comp to comprehend the roles of words in syntax. The Persian translations composed by the students based on Brian's three banks were similar to the following English phrases. A student one, uh, you can see on the slides, always it is the first being and that it neither becomes nor perishes, neither grows nor decays. Two, it always is that it neither becomes nor perishes, neither grows nor decays. Three, Affair. At first, the everlasting being neither becomes, nor perishes, neither decays, nor, decays, nor grows. For at first, that which is, is always. But 
it neither becomes nor perishes, neither grows nor decays. A student five did not compose any translation based, based on Berayan's three banks. Comparing the three banks, then, some of the students compose different translations of the sentence based on their different understandings of the role of the word presented differently in them. For example, based on the first three bank, a student two translated I own as a substantive, something like, like always being in English. While based on the second three banks, she translated it as a complete sentence. Something like English, it always is. To compare, a student one translated the same word as a complete sentence with a verb referring to being, something like always it is, based on the first three banks, while based on the second one, she translated them also as a complete sentence, but with a copula and the subject referring to being, something like always it is being being uh, uh, as a philosophical term. A student three translated them as always the non-being using the first and as the everlasting being using the second. And based on the first three bank, a student four translated them as being always is. While based on the second one, he translated them as that which is, is always. An answer to the main question of the workshop and the students seems that the three, three, uh, the three banks can provide enough information for the beginners to arrive at new Persian translations of the aforementioned sentences. However, the three banks cannot be employed solely by the beginners to compose translations since it is necessary for them to be aided by a teacher to understand the roles of the word in their syntactical relations in the sentence. Then, it is better to employ such diagrams alongside teaching grammars. If such diagrams are employed as additional course plan by teachers, the expected results may be reached more quickly. The teacher, being aided by such a diagram, can conduct the session better than a traditional plan in which the course is planned based on grammatical explanations and without employing such a diagram. Moreover, visible and different comprehensible analyses of one six, shown in different three banks, was one of the benefits of such a diagram in uh, terms of translation. Nevertheless, the Jiang's three banks here seems to be more comprehensible for the students compared to the three banks designed by Brian. And the students comprehend the roles of words such as adjectives and objects through the former better than the latter. Alongside the above mentioned item, if in such a beginner's course, based on the student's viewpoint. A simpler diagram had been employed. It would be better concerning translation. Noticing that for the beginners of Greek language, it may be better to pass uh, some elementary courses before using the diagram. However, if there is a true comprehension of the three banks of a text, the student can reach a better comprehension of the text. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much for this uh, uh, presentation, for this summary of, uh, of the workshop. Um, and we have the slides, we, we, we had a few problems at the beginning, but I think that fortunately now we could hear uh, Mr. Karamati. So I don't know, Mariam, if um, you still have... Uh, no, I can. I can. Uh, so we have the slides already in the in the uh, wiki page, and I think for the first parts that where we have missed the uh, the Mr. Karamati's sound, we can see that because I think that everything is is already there. Uh, so about about the about the idea of working with so that 
that was my idea so so we can see uh, my opinion and Mr. Karamati's opinion because I was talking in the beginning that I think it would be possible however we need more we need more scaffolding we need more data but I believe that it would be possible but but you see that so Mr. Karamati is, is a very uh, precise teacher and I believe that um, that so we have you know I see it from my perspective who who is someone with no experience with Greek and 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 um, so but but the point is that we all agree that uh, that and I think that it was something that Farnoosh also mentioned with the alignments we all agree that using alignment and tree banking with all its difficulties can help us to be more motivated to have a more deep understanding of the Greek text and and I think that it could be very useful that we we teach more Greek in Iran where we have not Greek for example in as as a as a, as a university course uh, yeah and I think that this could be uh, our summary if there are still questions we are happy to answer Yes, I thank you, Mr. For, Mrs. Faradi, uh, for your good. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry that I that I, asked, that I disagreed with you. I I hate to do that, but but so we have we have your researchers. We we are allowed to have different opinions. I think. <laughs> yeah, this is natural. And uh, very, uh, thank you very much. And uh, if there is any question, I can um, I try to answer. I don't know if we have. Oh, there is a question in the chat. I don't know. Maybe Mariam, you can see it. Yeah. So, uh, so, put the audio into smaller sentences. Uh, that's that's true, Anis. I think that um, um, I I believe that would be very helpful, and I think that it is. Uh, uh, we have discussed this with Greg as well although I'm I mean I mean for I mean uh, I think we should just I think if we take the uh, I totally agree those are those are very very complicated sentences so those are as complicated as they get if we'd started with Homer the syntax is much easier but had we taken the, the sentences of Plato and broken them down into the simpler sentences of which, which they're constructed from, I think that would be much easier. So it would be interesting. And, and we published, we, you know, people working with me, published a paper years ago about doing that automatically. And it certainly can be done by hand. So I think that is, uh, that would be the next step, would be to try, if you broke it, the things down into smaller pieces and then put them together, what, how that worked. You know, you know, but the the only thing that I just think of is that you know we have also in in language learning we have three different kind of understanding. So we have global understanding, we have selective understanding, and the detailed understanding. In global understanding, it's just important to understand who did what, why, and that's the thing that you say. So if you just just take the main verb and the subject and the direct object, it's enough. We have a sentence to to understand. But on the other hand. So that's the, something that we are we are experimenting, Greg. So that we we have a sentence and we try to understand every single word in that sentence. And I'm not sure we haven't started that yet, but I think that it's also, in my opinion, it's a very interesting way to start with with uh, with Greek. Just you know, it's just diving into the deep word of Greek words, and I I I like the idea, but I don't know how good it would it may work. I think it'll be easier with Homer because the, the syntax is usually not a problem with that. Plato, even if you know Greek, it's a hard thing to put those sentences together. So I think that's a challenge. Uh, but I, again, if we broke that down into 10 different sentences, it would be a different result. But we'll try this with, with Homer and see where we get. Okay, so thank you very much. Unfortunately, our time is over. It was a 
yes. <laughs> we could go on because it was really very, very interesting and intense. And I have to thank you all because we have this community in Tehran working, as you said, Mariam, in a very precise, rigorous way. And uh, we need people like you. I, I know your difficulties. You need data. Then you don't have courses at the university. So you are doing really a great job. And we are immensely grateful to you for, for producing more data and for experimenting with uh, these alignments. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> no, I know, really. We have uh, a great community. It's so, fabulous to all of you. Thank you so much. And we'll, we want to do everything we can to help. Yes, of course. Thank you. And, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And Sunoik is, is, is a small effort also to try to uh, combine, to, 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 to have people together and discuss. So thank you for everything. And also, so we have uh, the material is online. You have the class outline on GitHub, the YouTube link, and then the slides. So uh, next week, uh, we change topic because we will have a session about digital papyrology. Uh, and so, uh, well, is is over. So thank you again. See you uh, next week. And bye-bye. See you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good day.